BMW is getting into the hydrogen market and behind me is the iX5 hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. In this video, we're gonna talk about how hydrogen powertrains work and I'll be joined by Dr. Jurgen Guldner, who is the general manager of hydrogen programs for BMW. So I think the question that a lot of people have who are not familiar with hydrogen is how exactly does a hydrogen powertrain work here in the iX5? The uh, hydrogen vehicle is an electric vehicle, like a battery electric vehicle, but the main difference is that the energy is stored in terms of hydrogen and not in terms of electricity as with a battery electric vehicle. The hydrogen is stored in two tanks. We have one tank here under the center console and a second tank under the rear seat. And these two tanks hold a total of six kilograms of hydrogen. With that, we can travel about 500 kilometers of range. That is um, about 300 miles in the uh, VLTP cycle. With this iX5 versus a gasoline slash petrol iX5, the interior dimensions have not changed. Correct. We have the same interior and we integrated the hydrogen tanks underneath the body in what we call the tunnel here, where normally the transmission and the drive shaft are located. Mm -hmm. And the petrol tank is usually under the rear seat, and that's where we put the second hydrogen tank. As far as the feel for acceleration, what I can tell you, uh, as I'm in the driver's seat, uh, <laughs> there is a lot of get up and go, and there's a lot of quick and brisk acceleration. Now, if you could explain why there is such quick acceleration in a hydrogen vehicle. Since the hydrogen vehicle is an electric car, it needs electric power. Mm -hmm. And we put two systems here. One is the fuel cell, and the fuel cell system is located in the engine booth of the car. Mm -hmm. Here, the chemical reaction between the hydrogen in the tanks and oxygen from the ambient air takes place. So we have a few hundred cells in a so-called stack, mm -hmm. and there the hydrogen combines with oxygen. It generates electricity. That mm -hmm. electricity then drives the car, and the exhaust is simply water vapor. That's why it's emission-free. Now, our fuel cell system is the most powerful fuel cell system for passenger cars that we know about. It delivers 125 kilowatts of power and can do that continuously. But 125 kilowatts of power are not really enough for this type of car. So we added a battery for it that we tuned extra for power and you can accelerate now. <laughs> so you could feel the acceleration. In these situations, the power from the fuel cell system and the power from the battery are kind of added and combined into the electric motor. The battery is tuned for power and it delivers 175 kilowatts of extra power. So we have a total of almost 300 kilowatts of power, which equals to 400 horsepower. And that's what you felt. The uh, power is so instantaneous and so smooth because it's the car is driven by an electric motor. In mm -hmm. fact, it's the same electric motor that we use on our battery electric vehicles, like the iX, has exactly the same electric motor, and that delivers the power. There's no gears to shift or anything, so it's instantaneous and continuous acceleration here. What are some of the myths about hydrogen powertrains? One of the myths is that in our previous projects, like the Hydrogen 7, mm -hmm. we had liquid hydrogen, which is very, very cold. Mm -hmm. In fact, 253 minus Celsius, which means that you have to insulate the tank very well mm -hmm. but even no matter how well you insulate it you always will have a warming up of that hydrogen and then in that tank the pressure rises and at some point you have to release the hydrogen in a controlled manner but you still have to release it right which means you can't park the car for four weeks or six weeks so no long right. vacations for us no right? long vacations <laughs> right and that's why we abandoned that technology and went to the 700 bar gases hydrogen that we are using here. You can leave and park your car for four weeks, for six weeks, for two months, and it will be as full as it used to be. Now, what's the difference between green hydrogen and gray hydrogen? Gray hydrogen is produced from fossil fuels mm -hmm. like natural gas. 
and that process still creates CO2 and then that CO2 is released into the atmosphere. Right. And that's exactly want, what we want to avoid in the future, right? Mm -hmm. So green hydrogen is hydrogen being produced from green electricity, so renewable sources of electricity, mm -hmm. by a process that's called electrolysis. And this electrolysis is basically the reverse process of what we have here in the fuel cell system. We take electricity and water mm -hmm. and the electricity kind of splits up the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. And then the oxygen is released into the atmosphere mm -hmm. or collected for you know, clinics, for you know, breathing apparatus and so on. Mm -hmm. And the hydrogen is then stored, transported and then finally put into a car or used for other purposes in the industry, for example, to um, you know, be converted again into electricity or being burned in industrial processes. There's something in between as well. When the hydrogen is produced from natural gas, for example, you can take the CO2 that is being produced while converting natural gas into hydrogen and not release it into the atmosphere, but again store it and um, take it out and either take the carbon out and use that. That is called blue hydrogen. Mm. There's a lot of discussion about that. And then there's another method that is called pyrolysis, where we can actually burn something at a very high temperature, 600 or 800 degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. where the burning process is so hot that CO2 is not formed. It forms oxygen and the carbon as real carbon, mm -hmm. which then can be used, for example, to make graphite or carbon fibers. And that's wow. uh, turquoise hydrogen. <laughs> A lot of colors here, um, which is also very environmentally friendly because the substance that can be burned can be trash. So you can really oh. use trash to produce hydrogen, produce an energy carrier. Why hydrogen and why now? Hydrogen is the ideal complement to electricity. In the future, we'll have an energy system that is based on renewables, mm -hmm. so from wind, solar, water power okay but those energies are really produced when the sun is shining like on this beautiful day today right <laughs> or when the wind is blowing which means that they're not necessarily produced when the energy is needed right so hydrogen will be an additional energy carrier kind of complementing the electrons of electricity because there it's a molecule the uh, infrastructure that's out there for natural gas today can be modified to transport hydrogen over very long distances and also because it's a gas it can be stored over very long periods of time so basically you can transport the sun from one place to the next where you okay. actually need more energy or you can store the solar energy from the summer for the winter and that's uh, exactly why the time is now because now in the energy transition we're building more and more renewable energy which also means that we will need a mechanism to transport and to store this renewable energy and hydrogen is the solution. And as BMW, we've put out a lot of wonderful battery electric vehicles on the market right. and you've driven a few of them. I have. It's a great technology, but it might not be the ideal technology for everybody. There might right. be use cases of customers who want more flexibility, who maybe can charge at home, mm -hmm who uh, maybe you know, use their trailer hitch a lot um, in cold regions where battery electric cars are not ideal. And that's why we need a second technology. We call it the second leg to stand on <laughs> because, you know. You can't stand on one leg forever. You can't stand right. on leg, one leg for a long time. So we think we should leverage all the technologies that are available to decarbonize. The uh, X5 is the ideal vehicle for this pilot fleet because it combines two things. One, we have a slightly bigger car, a slightly heavier car, mm -hmm. where the application of hydrogen is ideal. Right. And also, a lot of people who are using these cars are people who drive a lot and mm -hmm. who need a lot of flexibility. And that's why we combine the vehicle side and the user side in this car. So let's talk about the development process of this. Yes, um, it took us about four years to develop these uh, pilot vehicles here. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we started with developing the uh, components mm -hmm. and then went on to the vehicles. We did a lot of simulations. 
we did all the safety stuff first. So we did mm. the crash tests and everything before we even started to build cars that were going to drive on roads. Really? Yes. We wanted to make sure everything's safe. Mm -hmm. And we passed all the crash tests. Also, for example, the tanks went through extensive testing um, certification yeah. for the hydrogen tanks. And then we started driving first on our own test centers. Mm -hmm. And then we did a lot of testing, uh, not just on roads, but we went to Sweden. Um, three times, um, a few weeks on winter, mm -hmm. ice, snow. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important to do that because we're dealing with water in a system and obviously right. water freezes. freezes. So you really have to take care of that. But it's solved. We can shut down the car in the cold and then it's really prepared for a freezing night. Okay. And then in the morning it starts up and it's back there and it works. Wow. We also did summer testing, obviously. Because if it gets cold, it'll also get hot, right? It'll also get hot. <laughs> we have a test facility in the south of France, near Marseille. Mm -hmm. And we went there a few uh, summers to making sure that everything also works in the heat. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing we did was uh, just last November, we went to the Alps um, in Italy. Nice. And tried out the car on Alpine roads, going up and down the mountains. Mm. Um, and the performance was just incredible. What exactly is the difference between the drive feel between a hydrogen vehicle and an EV? Actually, there is no difference because a hydrogen vehicle is an electric car and mm -hmm. we're driving with an electric motor and it's the same driving feel. You get the beautiful acceleration, mm -hmm. you get the uh, recuperation when mm -hmm. you're braking and you have the silent ride. The difference is how you're fueling it. You can refuel the hydrogen car in three to five minutes and you just go to a gas station like you do today with your gasoline or diesel car. You go to the gas station, gas it up and keep going. So can hydrogen be complicated? Yeah, does it have to be? Not at all. As you've seen through this video, we have a full understanding of how the hydrogen powertrain works, specifically here with the BMW iX5. If you've got any questions or comments on what you've seen in this video on the iX5 hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, let us know in the comments. We're happy to hear from you. Connect with us on social media, join our community, and for driving.ca, I'm Jay Canna.